Shri Guru Bhavandaiva Govinda Gringanaisa Vande Prashada Turiya Shaman Sarvaramba Shubhankaraha. So we're continuing today with Shri Shri Prakam Jivanamrita. And yesterday, or not yesterday, the, the day before yesterday, we finished with this beautiful verse of Jamuna Charja. Vavanta Mevanu Charanya Dantara Prashantani Shesh Manora Tantara Karha Maikanti Kanitya Kinkara Paharshi Yashyami Sanata Jitam. When will I bloom in a life of servitude as your eternal devotee, my heart pacified due to all other desires being consumed by engagement in your uninterrupted service? <clears throat> And Param Gumarsh, he, he, you know, distills this, you know, as, as demonstrating in terms of what is favorable, this aspiration, an earnest aspiration to achieve perfection in devotion. Because we are, we are in a mixed condition. <laughs> we have, we have some percentage of desire to offer ourselves in service and devotional activity. But then there is so much other percentage which is not so. <laughs> and we have so many tendencies in the category of, of Anya Bilash, our whimsical, random, fleeting material desires, karma, you know, or, or some attachment to, to piety, to good activity, uh, and jnana, some tendencies for, you know, the aspiration for liberation, to become free from suffering, that is also an anartha, the desire to be free from suffering. In, in, in relation to the objective of pure devotion, that's, that, is, that is something negative. The, the pure, pure, pure devotee has zero desire, even for that. So... Or tendencies, you know, to acquiring too much knowledge or making this, a, you know, a head, a head thing, a brain thing. So all of these other things are floating around in us, along with some tiny, tiny spark of a desire for, you know, pure, exclusive devotion. And and sometimes these things and. And Paragumar has pointed this out. They, when things become, especially when something in us becomes very glaring, that is anti to devotion, it can actually, like, uh, like it can actually stimulate a deeper desire for more exclusive devotion. You know, we see something in us, and it, and and we're so you know unhappy, so appalled at that 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 it makes us like run more to the shelter you know, of exclusive devotion. So this expression is very nice. When will I bloom in a life of servitude as your eternal devotee, my heart pacified due to all other desires being consumed by engagement in your uninterrupted service by Jamuna Charja. So now the next verse and we're in verse number 18. Parikar Sider Akanksha the aspiration to attain to the perfection of becoming an associate servitor of the Lord. And this is another verse by Jamuna Acharya. Sakrit Tvara Kada Viloka Nashaya Jini Krita Nutama Bhukti Mukti Bhi Mahatma Birmam Avalokya Tamnaya Kshane Pite Yad Viraho Tidu Saha O oh my Lord, please lead me into the glance of those great devotees who, in their heart's aspiration to only once behold your divine form, consider sense enjoyment and liberation to be like straw and whose separation is unbearable for even you. And I was thinking about Srila Gurudev because he... He was really a Paramahamsa. He really saw the environment very clearly in terms of what it was. And, and for, for Gurudev, and as it's said here, sense, enjoyment, and liberation, they were like straw. 
for him. He, it, it, it was, it was, it was zero consideration. It was only, you know, things were only valuable according to how they could be engaged in service. Otherwise, whatever, what, what, whatever we may consider to be attractive and desirable, it, it you know, it, it was like a zero consideration for Shiva Gurudev. And I was I was remembering one one incident. Uh, I I won't mention names or places, <laughs> but there was one place where where uh, uh, a senior devotee who who had like some position as a spiritual guide, really you can say, he started a particular business which was very consuming, and and Shri Gurudev. He wasn't happy about that because it, uh, I mean, I, I expect because it just, the nature of that business was it, it was so consuming, it took so much time and energy and, and he wasn't able to, to give so much attention to his, you know, duties in the, in the temple and the mission. And, and but Srila Gurudev, he, he, you know, as he told that devotee later, when he asked him, like, why didn't you tell me you weren't happy about this? And Gurudev said, because... Because you were so enthusiastic. You know? <laughs> that was Srila Gurudev's mood. He didn't like to dampen people's and devotees' enthusiasm, even if what they were doing wasn't actually desirable according to the real standard. You know? He liked devotees to figure things out. You know? If it was someone very intimate to him, then that would be, that's different, would be different. But otherwise, he, he didn't like to discourage. If somebody was encouraged, you know, like, like a child, you know, they make their scribbly scribbles with crayons, you know, and, and, you know, it doesn't, like, objectively speaking, doesn't have any value, but they have some enthusiasm to do something creative, and so we want to let them express that, and, and you know, as they mature, you know, learn how to make something, you know, that's, you know, has some more value. So Gurudev, he was like that, and he told it to him, you were so enthusiastic, I didn't want to disturb you. So at the time, Srila Gurudev didn't say anything to that devotee, but privately he mentioned to a few devotees he he was unhappy about this. And then and then one devotee there who Gurudev mentioned it to, who was friends with that devotee, he was trying to like kind of like stick up for him or like make him look good in front of Gurudev. And and he said, he said, oh, but Gurudev, maybe he'll be successful. <laughs> Or maybe his business will be successful. <laughs> it was totally the wrong thing to say. <laughs> and and Srila Gurudev said, Prabhu, you cannot lie to me. I am a Paramahamsa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like from where Gurudev is sitting, like success, you know, material success, that's not a consideration. Maybe he'll be successful in his business, but that's not what's being considered here. That's not a factor at all. You know, I'm thinking in terms of his devotional life. I'm thinking in terms of the the, uh, the the care of our mission here. You know, those were the significant factors. But whether or not the business would be financially, you know, materially successful, that was not a consideration at all. <laughs> that's not in the equation here. Like just. Get out. <laughs> very, very funny, you know. Gurudev could be like, he could be very frank, you know, about his own position. You know? <laughs> so we were fortunate we had the contact of, of that. That kind of Aisha. And we would experience with Gurudev and we would see with others, you know, like someone may be really excited about something and 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 Gurudev was like he was like the embodiment of sobriety. He had this this incredible sobriety and heaviness about him and and we're like on this emotional, mental plane and and, and then you get in front of Gurudev and it's just like, Oh <laughs> you know, suddenly you're like 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 the, all this like energy you're in, it's like quelled. Like you're in front of this superior being, superior conscious entity, and you get this deeper perspective. And... <laughs> and whose separation 
is unbearable for even you. For these these type of devotees, you know, even the Lord is even, you know, feels the pain of of their separation. That is the ultimate power of a real devotion. That the Lord Himself, He is bound by that. He is in need of that. He is attracted to that. Shri Krishna Karshini Chasa. And I, I was thinking of Srila Sridamarsh, and it's included at the end here in the appendix. Um, uh, Param Gumarsh, these prayers he wrote about uh, in separation from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, and he, he described how how finally he left and because uh, Srimati Radharani herself, she was feeling his separation. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur and she withdrew him from this plane. You know, a, 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 you know, a devotee of such 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 level that even Sri Sri Radha Govinda, they are feeling in need of, of their company. So, my Lord, please lead me into the glance of those great devotees who in their heart's aspiration to only once behold your divine form consider sense enjoyment and liberation to be like straw and whose separation is unbearable for even you. Just to be in the glance, to, the, to receive the glance of such a great soul. So many lifetimes, so many millions of lifetimes they are successful is to have a moment's association, to receive the gracious glance. That is, that then our birth is fulfilled. And we don't want to, we also don't want to, you know, be passive about that. But we want to really, you know, not just sit on that, but really utilize that. You know? Because we, we can receive grace, we can receive sukriti, but according to how we, like, reciprocate with that, then, you know, it, it becomes meaningful or not. It's, you know, there, there, there must be some, you know, reciprocation, some endeavor on our side for that meaning of that, the significance of that to really, you know, bear fruit. I was, I was really happy to read. It was so clarifying. I was going through Divine Guidance and uh, Shiva Gurudev's book and and in one section there he's saying how <clears throat> how these three factors will determine our our progress uh, our karma so that's like on the negative the side things that will take us back our sukriti so you know what what grace we've we've received we can say from from the Lord from the Guru from the Vaishnavas. And then he also said, third thing, the quality of our practice. The quality of our practice. And that, that was so clarifying. So our sukriti will take us forward. Uh, and our karma will take us back. But, but the, depending on, on, our, on the quality of our own practice, those two things will, will have effect also. That's also a factor there. Our karma may may be taking us, trying to take us away. But if our practice is very, is you know, is very prominent, we are there's some conscious endeavor. Then that can protect us. That can save us. And on the other hand, if our we may have received a lot of sukriti, but if we're not really acting upon that, then you know that 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 will only be of so much value to us. Jai, Bhagavad, good morning. <laughs> You're looking very colorful today. <laughs> so, you know, that, that element of free will, you know, that, that is always there. There's always some element of free will there. So what we have received, we want to we want to do something about that. You know. Okay. Now this verse, very, very nice verse, and this is very famous verse by Bilva Mangal Thakur, who is this great, uh, great Vaishnav, who composed this. Uh, he lived, I don't know, 
like maybe a, a thousand years before Mahaprabhu or something like that. Some quite some time before Mahaprabhu, he lived, and and his history is is very, very wonderful. Uh, but uh, but he you know eventually came to to you know Krishna Bhakti. Exclusive devotion to Krishna. And this is one of his, his verses, and a very nice verse, and quoted many times by Srila Gurudev and Srila Sridhar Maharaj. Nirupadika bhakti sadupo palabdi. The realization of the nature of unconditional devotion. <clears throat> and this is the verse. And maybe this is Krishna Karnamrita. I'm not, I'm not sure. Bhakti Tsai Stidatara Bhagavan. And that's a book that we don't read, but there's a few verses from there which are gurus. They, they are more relevant for us and, and they quote from time to time. Bhakti Tsai Stidatara Bhagavan Yadisyat Daivena Nafalati Divya Kishora Murti. Mukti Swayam Mukuli Tanjali Seva Tesman Dharmarta Kama Gataya Samaya Pratiksha. O Supreme Lord, if our devotion for you were more steadfast, your adolescent form would naturally arise, appear within our hearts. Then there would not be the slightest necessity to pray for the triple pursuits of religiosity, gain, and sensual desire. Dharma Arta Kama and their negation in the form of liberation, mukti. And, and so these are these are all the things that the whole of Vedic India is holding as as the, the things to be aspired after, right? But for one who is engaged in bhakti, not necessary. Because mukti will personally attend us. As a con and there's a lot of parentheses here, which you know Sagarmar is elaborating upon. Uh, Mukti will personally attend us as a concomitant subsidiary, subsidiary fruit of devotion, in the form of deliverance from ignorance. Her hands cupped in prayer, Mukuli Tanjali, Mukti Swayam Mukuli Tanjali. Her hands cupped in prayer like a preordained maidservant. And the fruits of bhukti, transitory pleasure culminating in attainment of heaven, will eagerly await their orders from us. Should any necessity arise for them in the service of your lotus feet. <clears throat> Samaya pratiksha, you know, waiting for that call that proper time. Srila Srinivas, he, he said like a like if a master has a has a calling bell and <laughs> you know if the devotee the devotee has no interest in all of these things, you know, worldly uh, attainments. Uh, but if the if some need should arise in their service to the Lord, then Srila Sridhar said, like, like, some, like a master has some calling bell and they'll stay, keep some distance away. And, and when the master rings the bell, then they'll come running. Oh, what can we do for you? you know, they're very eager. You know? they, all, they, are, they like to serve bhakti. Bhimilananda Prabhu told me of, a, of, a, of one occasion when he, he was one of Srila Gurudev's personal servitors. For many years, and he he told me how how uh, it it. I don't remember if he asked Gurudev or Gurudev brought it up first. But but uh, but Shri Gurudev was say, saying how 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 you see all these things that like I don't. He he, I, he asked him, "Have you ever seen me ask anyone for money?" He, he asked, "Have you ever seen me ask anyone for money?" Every whatever I need for service, it comes. And he said, you know, Lakshmi Devi, she's always coming. And, and he said, because, because Lakshmi, she likes to serve the devotees of Krishna. So it, 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 is, it will automatically come. 
and actually this is like a point that will come in the in the in a in a devotee's practicing life where they can go either way because that as a result of one's you know devotional progress they will attract these things and so that's the point where where a weaker devotee one of weaker faith they will be deviated by those things and they'll go down <laughs> as we as we've unfortunately seen time and time again and have those tendencies within ourselves uh, there there's a in a, there's this outline of of different obstacles that the practitioner will faith will face uh, maybe given by Vishala Chakrati Thakur uh, maybe Bhakti Vinod Thakur um, but 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 one of them is uh, oh wait, I'm trying to remember the Sanskrit something Tarangini but it means it, it's a it's a funny expression it means a uh, swimming in the ocean of the byproducts of devotion. <laughs> so like like all of these byproducts that you know worldly enjoyment, worldly resources, they will come to the devotee. They will come, and so then then the then someone some then a, a weaker practitioner may be attracted to those things. They deviate and and they become immersed in those things instead of sticking to the path of exclusive devotion, you know. So, you know, pratishta, name and fame will come, right? For someone who's becoming prominent in devotion, then, then you know, fame will come to them. And, and then at that point, they can go either way. They can either take that and offer it to Guru, you know, like we were mentioning the other day, Gurudev's comment, I'm making myself into a pratishta rocket, he, he said once. And all the petitions that's coming to me, I'm launching that up to Guru Maharaj. I'm not keeping, if I keep it, 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 it you know, one percentage for myself, I'm going to go down. So, so that petitia, that that name and fame, position, power will come to us. And we have to offer it all up. Or we can become like immersed in that, you know, and, you know, enjoying that and taking that for ourselves. And, and it's it's frightening because it can happen in a very subtle way. It's very frightening. It can just creep up upon you, and before you know it, you're way over here. You're way off track. You know. So and and that's you know one reason why why a practitioner may may fall down. You know, Gurudev mentioned the two principal reasons. One is. Um, uh, one is uh, pratishta because you know they, they they have too much ego and, and an inflated idea of, of their own position, and the other is um, is Vaishnava aparad, which is more rare. He said, but more generally, it will be because one's pratishta has you know then it's like Krishna's mercy that that there must be some some type of fall down and bringing one to more of a humble position and a better platform for progressing in a genuine way and then similarly uh, you know wealth will come uh, uh, sense and opportunities for sense enjoyment they will come and and if one deviates you know from that consciousness of utilizing everything in service and instead began begins to take that for themselves then then you know they are they are off off the path. Um, but then the you know the the pure hearted devotee, the very faithful practitioner, they will they will understand the real position of all these things and their own position. And, and only what they need, if they need for themselves or for seva, they will accept that. And with that vision, that it is, it is, you know, you know, as we mentioned the other day, you know, kanak, kamini, pratishta, these, these three things. You know, wealth, kanak, wealth, that is the property of Lord Narayan, Lord Vishnu, kamini, you know, sense pleasure, that is the property of Krishna, and pratishta, name and fame. That is the property of Guru. 
you know, if we keep that type of consciousness, you know, then then we then we will be safe, and we can maintain an authentic, you know, position on the path. So, you know, and and these things it will happen. These things they will follow because they are attracted to bhakti, as it is being mentioned here. And and also, you know, it's also, you know, this point is here also about liberation, you know, that we don't have to separately try to become free from our, you know, all of our anartas, from all of our impurities. But, but you know, those things, you know, that purification, it will automatically follow. It's not that we have to separately do this austerity and this ritual and this mantra and this meditation and this yoga to become free of our mental disturbance and desires and attachments. <laughs> Simply by the by the cultivation of bhakti, liberation, mukti. This phrase is just like 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 means like mukti herself will come with her folded hands. Mukti swayam mukali tanjali save to to serve, save with desire to serve, save with Mukti swayam mukali tanjali save and Dharmarta Kama Gateya Samaya Pratiksha. Mukti Devi herself will come with folded hands desiring to serve. And uh, and Dharma Arta Kama, they will wait, you know, to receive the orders of the, the devotees. And then liberation, that can, you know, like to, that's also like a, a, a turning point, you know, that like like Shri Sridharmarsh has, has has explained that that the the jiva will achieve a position like like Shiva, uh, where where they are they're like in this in between state where they have a position of mastership over Maya, they're fully released from from Maya, being under the influence themselves, but they're still in the relativity of Maya. They have some position of mastership over Maya. So that's also a point where the jiva can can be attracted to that position and 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 remain there. So that also will be you know, must be rejected because there's no entrance into the positive plane there. There's there's a there's one place where Gurudev is saying you know that you know, liberation will come. The devotee will happily uh, like refuse that liberation. <laughs> And continue on their path. <laughs> These are some they're like very charming expressions, like that. And and actually, the devotee will will just cross through that without even noticing. You know, if if someone's exclusively on the path of devotion, it won't even on one level it won't even make much of a difference. They're still doing the same thing. They're still focused on the same thing, and things will become we can say like more smooth. Uh, you know, one will be, and from the point of liberation, one will be able to awaken in this full-fledged expression of devotion and dedication, because one will be free of all of these lower things dragging us down. But on another level, we're still doing the same thing, you know. And so, it, it, on one level, it doesn't have that much significance. I'm still trying to wholly give myself in, in service. And okay, I, I've crossed that stop on the train, great. <laughs> but we're still in that same train, we're still doing the same thing. <laughs> so, any nice source. And, and, and this point is also found in, in many places, that, that through just this one thing, thing, through the practice of bhakti, everything else will follow. We were also discussing this for a few few days ago too from Param Guru Maharaj's, uh you know summary verse about Sharanavati. You know, but this is found throughout the scriptures. It's in Bhagavatam, there's several places this point is made. You know, you know, freedom from the negative side that will liberation will automatically come. You know, knowledge, spiritual knowledge that will automatically come. Whatever one may may need, whatever one may want on on a deeper level, all of that will automatically come through the practice of devotion.
Okay. And this next verse, we, we were discussing this verse the other day. Raghupati Upadhyay. And Raghupati Upadhyay, very great devotee and very much appreciated by Mahaprabhu. I believe he's a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. And Mahaprabhu met with him uh, when he was in Prayag. And um, uh, I think it was just before he gave instruction to Rupa Goswami for those ten days, Srila Rupa Goswami. And they had this wonderful meeting and 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 it was and it was it's significant because it's one of the few occasions where where uh, where Mahaprabhu places himself in the in the position of a student, you know, like he does with Ramananda Rai also. So he gives that type of honor to this Raghupati Upadhyay. And like asking asking him, you know, what is the best thing and like like that. And there's a few very nice verses there that Raghupati Upadhyay gives and this is this is one of them. Actually I'm not sure if this verse is exactly from that exchange. Um, but from Raghupati Upadhyay in any case. Rajarasa Shishtatvam, the super excellence of devotion in the mood of Vrindavan. <clears throat> so, we are in acceptance of the favorable. This ideal, we may not be there, we're not there, and we won't think that we are, pretend we are, that will be very foolish and detrimental. But we want to appreciate, we want to understand where where this train is going, right? And and where our gurus want to take us, what is their conception, what is their ideal. So that ideal of Vrindavan, uh, you know, Kaishur Krishna, that youthful Krishna of Vrindavan, that, that is particularly uh, what has been considered to be the highest and ultimate attainment by our gurus. So we want to, to cultivate some appreciation and understanding of that. That is a favorite thing. And then this verse. Shrutam apare smritam itare bharatam anye bhajantu bhava vitaha aham iha nandam vande yasya linde param brahma Of persons afraid of material existence, some worship the shruti scriptures, Vedas. Some worship the smriti scriptures, supplementary religious codes, and others worship the Mahabharata. But as far as I am concerned, I worship Sri Nanda Maharaj, in whose courtyard the supreme absolute truth is playing. So uh, we 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 discussed this uh, the other day, uh, to some extent, and I just wanted to mention now in uh, in the Golden Volcano of Divine Love, in that section on the Shikshashtakam, the the fifth verse, Param Guru Maharaj, he quotes, he quotes this verse in relation to the fifth verse of Shikshashtakam. Ayi nanda tanuja kinkaram patitam bambishame bhavamburo kripaya tavapada pankaja stita dulu sajisham vichintaya. Very wonderful verse of Shikshashtakam, very rele- relevant for us. Know, this, uh, and what's significant in relation to this verse is that the Mahaprabhu here is addressing Krishna as Nanda Tanuja, as the, which means the son of Nanda Maharaj. <clears throat> so this this particular conception of the absolute is being, you know, highlighted and addressed here. You know, this like very charming, very sweet, very wonderful expression of the absolute you know where he can come you know as as somebody's son <laughs> somebody's child in, in this playful form you know that type of lord you know we are we are approaching and and so param gumar she he mentions there and and he also there he there's this other wonderful verse in in Bhagavatam, 
I have it noted here. Nanda Kim Akarod Brahman Shreya Eva Mahodayam Yashoda Va Mahabhaga Papa Yasya Stanam Hari which is spoken by uh, who is it spoken by? Maybe Shukadev Goswami. I'm not sure. But uh, but saying, or maybe it's even, maybe it's Parikshit Maharaj. Yeah, I think it's Parikshit Maharaj to Shukadev. Saying, you know, what did Nanda Maharaj do? <laughs> what did Yashoda do? That they've got, you know, the supreme absolute, like, like in this, like in their clutches, like, you know, in their backyard, you know, as it, as it said, you know, you know, that he's, he's, uh, you know, how fortunate is Nanda Maharaj? You know, what did he do? And what about Mother Jashoda? You know, that, 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 uh, that, that supreme uh, Lord, he is sucking her breasts, you know, he's taking her breast milk. Like, he's in this type of position. Like, so it's saying, like, what did they do? Like, this is just incredible. This is inconceivable. How could we understand such a thing as possible? Uh, so then, uh, Param Gumarish in that, that section in Golden Volcano, he's saying, uh, you know, like, like, you know, these yogis and jnanis and dhyanis and, and so on and so forth, they have all of these, like, you know, very abstruse methods for, for uh, you know, approaching the absolute. And if they're fortunate, they get some small touch of that, you know. But on the other hand, you know, the residents of Vrindavan, you know, through this very simple, like, heart approach, they've got this most intimate and direct connection. And and so Param Guru he, he he gives this, this very, very funny analogy. Uh, he says, if, if somebody tells me that, that a hawk has, has taken my nose, then what will I do? You know, will I immediately go running after the hawk? You know, like on this wild goose chase, a wild hawk chase? Or will I first check to see if my no nose is actually gone? You know? <laughs> so, so he said, you know, in the same way, like if I'm being told I can have the absolute in a very direct way, in a very simple way, in a very immediate way, then why will I go in this very long, roundabout, and uncertain way that at best will just give me some touch of that? No, I will follow this very like direct and, and you know simple way of, of approach. You know, if I'm told I can have that type of connection with the absolute, then I'm signing up for that. You know, I'm gonna go for that option. <laughs> And you know that's what's being being given to us. It is a very simple and direct transaction. There's a there's a verse in Bhagavatam which Lugurdev liked very much. It gives a definition of Bhagavat Dharma, and it uh, Ye Vai Bhagavata Pokta begins like that. Uh, and, and it, it defines Bhagavat Dharma, you know, basically as 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 doing what the Lord says. Like what what the Lord has said will please him, like in a direct way, doing that. <laughs> That's it, you know, simple. And and Gurudev would, would say, you know, if Krishna says, I want a samosa, then we give him a samosa. Like that that's that's what this is, actually. That's what Bhagavad Dharma is, that's what Vaishnava Dharma is. It's it's simple and direct. What makes Krishna happy? You know, so Krishna has said he likes Harinam Sankirtan. So that's what we're doing. That's our religion. No. No, and so many other things, you know, they are not they are not required. No, so like those uh, those those Brahmins in Krishna Leela who are performing these very elaborate fire sacrifices and then Krishna and Balaram are nearby and they're hungry and so the cowherd boys and they tell the cowherd boys, Oh, there's some Brahmins over there, they have all this, you know, elaborate food preparations. You you ask them, can they bring and can we have some of that? And so the cowherd boys went, Oh, Krishna and Balaram, they're nearby and they're hungry. Could we have some of these foodstuffs here? And and those Brahmins, they're they uh 
they just they just completely ignore them you know who are these you know little boys you know, you know we are doing some very important religious activity here <laughs> They don't even, you know, condescend to speak to them, you know, in, in response. And so they they go back and they tell Krishna, oh, you know, they wouldn't even answer us, you know. So then Krishna says, go to their wives. <laughs> and the wives of the Brahmins, they've been waiting their whole lives for this opportunity. You know? So they're, they're in ecstasy. <clears throat> And then later, and that, that is included in Prabhupada Jivan Amrita, those Brahmins, they realize how foolish they've been and they're denouncing themselves, you know. Like to hell, they say, to hell with our, our Brahmin birth, to hell with all our Vedic knowledge, to hell with all our sacrifices. The Supreme Lord himself came and, and, and we could not recognize that, you know. They were so absorbed in their ritualistic religious activity, they couldn't recognize, like, God is right here on your doorstep asking for some food. Like, <laughs> this is this is the significant thing here. You can drop all your, you know, your your mantra this and mantra that, you know. In the face of some immediate connection, it's all totally, you know, insignificant. But you see these tendencies they can you know, this is like a clear example, but in our own like service lives, it's very easy to to begin to follow like that. You know, we get absorbed in the ritual and the practice, and when there's actually some like more immediate necessity there, we don't recognize that. You know, we're 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 rigidly sticking to the stereotype thing, and we can't recognize when it's necessary to make some adjustment. So, so it's something we we try to remember it can get very silly you know <laughs> very silly <laughs> there's no doubt how the sinner who knows anyone who spent time in a temple you know we know how how silly things can get you know the devotees you know stuck on some you know particular <laughs> particular idea or way of doing things <laughs> What time is it now? 9.53 um, Okay, one more verse. And stop. Tatrabhajan Padati the path to devotion in the Vrindavan conception. So we see Param Guru Maharaj, you know, there's some clear system. It's not randomly that he's, you know, all these verses are here, but but there's some there's some progression. So he Param Guru Maharaj started out with the most general and broad thing and broader uh, general principles, and he's moving to more and more refined things in terms of what will be considered favorable. So now, like in terms of the ideal, the path to devotion in the Vrindavan conception. And this is another verse from Upadesha Amrita by Shri Rupa Goswami. Tanama Rupa Charitari Sukirtananu Smrityo Kramena Rasana Manasi Niyodya Jishtan Rajet Ranuragi Jananu Gami Kalam Nayed Akilam Utyupadesha Sara. And so again, uh, because there's a Bengali expanded translation by Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, then Shila Sridhamarsh has selected that instead of a direct uh, translation of the Sanskrit. Krishna nam rup kundila chatushtoi, guru muke shunile kirta nudoi, kirti to huile krame smarananga pai. Kirtan smaran kale kram pate dai Jataruchi jan jiva man milaya Krishna no ragmaja Janano smaria Nidantar brajabas Manasaba jan Eupadesha koroho grahan When Krishna's name, form, nature, and pastimes divine 
are heard from Shri Gurudev when heart, one's heart awakes in song. As pure chanting ensues, remembrance is attained. Thus chanting and remembering, step by step, ascent is gained. Those engaging tongue and mind who begin to relish nectar, adore Shri Krishna following the residence of Braja. Reside always in Braja within the heart's devotion. Surely you must accept this nectar of instruction. So this is, uh, these instructions, you know, we can understand they're not for, you know, Kanishta Adhikar practitioners like ourselves. This, this is uh, higher, for higher class of, of Vaishnava. Of course, we can also understand in a general sense res residence and braja, you know, you know, keeping the association of devotees and connection with some, uh, some, some ashram like that. We can also, could also understand in some general sense like that. Okay, well. And then next we come to another very important verse in Upadesha Nita. Any last comments? Happy to have you with us, Ramananda Puri. <laughs> you, like, you like to sit in the classes. <laughs> well, we'll do some kirtan now, then you can be more... Engaged. Jai Shishi Prapana Jivananda Tamaki. Jai Shri Gurudev. Jai Prabhupada.